And what I need you to know, moms and dads and patients out there, is that the way to get rid of the struggles of ADHD and turn them into a superpower is you have to keep digging all the way down to the foundational real root cause. And the foundational real root cause is not chemical imbalance. Welcome to the Experience Miracles Podcast, where we help parents find hope, answers, and drug-free help to overcome your child's chronic health challenges. I'm your host, Dr. Tony Ebel, and I'll be sharing my experiences as both a dad and a doctor on every episode. I can take the latest science and neurology of healing and break it down in the most simple and relatable way possible. We'll take on the toughest topics and answer your biggest questions through interviews with other amazing parents and leading experts, leaving you with practical action steps that you can take to help your child heal and thrive. It's time to expect and experience miracles. Let's get started. All right, everyone. This solo episode of the Experience Miracles podcast is going to get extremely personal right out of the gates and probably a good bit controversial as well, because today's topic and deep dive scientific investigation is all about ADHD, a condition and supposed disorder that I most definitely certainly have. Therefore, this conversation will be an easy, free, fast flowing one for me personally because of my relatability, real life experience, but also because I've spent the last 20 years of my life not just learning to harness my ADHD into a superpower for myself, but I've also been studying the real science and the real root causes of ADHD professionally, and then using that information to help thousands of kids and adults as well overcome their ADHD-related challenges and learn how to harness their superpowers as well. And here's the best part. All of this has been done without dangerous, side effect riddled, wear off after a few years anyways, drugs and medications that are class two narcotic stimulants that are the most commonly prescribed medications used to treat ADHD when it's termed a disorder and a deficit. And these drugs are often given to kids as young as two or three years old. While so much to do with ADHD can be frustrating for parents, for teachers, and certainly for the kids and adults who are struggling with those ADHD related challenges, that frustration and negative emotion that comes with it can often be repackaged and switched to an exciting, positive emotion and honestly, pure excitement once we can do for you exactly what I promise we will do with today's episode. That is first, help change your perspective that the conventional medical world really wants you to hold on to, that ADHD is a deficit, is a disorder and only leads to bad things and therefore needs to be shut down, medicated, suppressed or supposedly fixed in some way. And second, I want to get you to see and understand what's really going on and actually causing ADHD in the first place so that you can address the actual root cause head on and turn your child or maybe even your own ADHD into an absolute superpower instead of the daily struggles you may be living with right now. No matter what you've been told about ADHD and whether or not you've already tried medication, please go into this entire episode with an open mind and an opportunity to learn something new that could seriously change change the course of your child and your entire family's life in a major way. Because of both my personal and professional experience with ADHD, this is honestly my very favorite conversation to have. Because when parents and then the kids themselves see the massive opportunity for an incredible life that this ADHD wiring affords them, it becomes something truly magical. And that child and that family become honestly almost unstoppable. When you study and really look at the history of this world, you're going to find that so many of the most impactful change makers out there today and in history have had ADHD. You'll see it everywhere you look. You'll see wildly successful, happy, impactful people taking their ADHD and making sure it sure as heck is not a deficit, not a disorder, and not a hindrance to their quality of life, but instead using it for all sorts of good and creating impact in this world. And honestly, with an ADHD brain, having a lot of fun all along the way. That all said, I promise you this, we will not skip over the struggles. We will not hide from the fact that so often ADHD does turn into everyday struggles and challenges, especially in the traditional school system. We'll get right into the reality that the current overstressed, overscheduled, wildly toxic, perfect storm world our kids are growing up in today 
is leading to way more stressed out, stuck on sympathetic fight or flight, gas pedal, nervous system kiddos than ever before. As you'll hear me talk a lot about today, there's definitely a sweet spot with ADHD, where the child's nervous system needs to be fine-tuned, balanced, and coordinated just right to make sure that things do become positive, do become superpowers, and do become useful instead of stressful, detrimental, and daily challenges. Another way to look at it is there's almost a cliff, if you will, that the ADHD brain and nervous system falls off of when stress, tension, toxicity become too much, and it shifts the nervous system into this excessive fight or flight sympathetic mode, and the brake pedal, and the handling, and the relaxation, and regulation side of the nervous system gets shut down. The one thing I've learned through my lifelong experience with ADHD and helping thousands of patients turn their struggles into superpowers is this. You got to really know what you're doing. And this is why 95% of patients do not get the help they really want and really need from conventional pediatricians, neurologists, and psychiatrists. 95, 95% or more of traditional medical providers, and sadly, most teachers, school administrators, grandparents out there today still see ADHD as only a genetic disorder, and there's nothing but bad things associated with it. They do not understand the real science and neuroscience behind it. They do not help parents and patients deploy drug-free strategies that harness these challenges and turn them into superpowers instead. And lastly, not only does ADHD come with some of these real-life challenges for kids, adults, and families, but it also comes with a seemingly endless array of questions, opinions, controversies, perspectives, and conversations that can leave you up late at night searching for answers. And I promise this podcast episode right here will give you those answers, that hope, and those drug-free solutions you've been searching for. If you've asked yourself questions like, man, is ADHD a real disorder or is it just a different personality type? Is ADHD always a bad thing and truly a disorder that needs to be fixed, suppressed with drugs and medications all lifelong? And what really causes ADHD? Is it just genetics or these environmental factors at play? And if so, which ones? Is it really a chemical imbalance like my doctors and internet searches and pharmaceutical companies want me to believe? Or is there something more going on that actually causes the dopamine and those chemicals to get out of whack and out of balance? Here's my quick bottled up Put all together answer to all those questions. Yes, it's real. No, it doesn't have to be a disorder. Yes, certain personality types absolutely skew in the direction of ADHD. No, it's not always a bad thing. No, you don't need to be fixed by a neurologist, medicated, suppressed, or even shut down in that way. And no, it's not purely a genetic mutation, a genetic condition, not even close. Absolutely, yes, environmental factors are at play, many of them. And yes, indeed, there's absolutely something going on at a deeper level that is way more advanced than the outdated chemical imbalance theory, what traditional MDs and pharmaceutical companies have told us and want us to hang on to so they can sell us and our kids those medications. And now that we've gone to the heart of the discussion, let's get into the meat of the conversation and start to break down the science and neurology behind ADHD and get you what you're looking for. Natural, drug-free, real-life solutions and options to help your child thrive. All right. Now that I answered all of your questions jarbled together in one rapid fire paragraph, I promise you this. We're going to go through them bit by bit, segment by segment, if you will, section by section. We're going to take on the controversy. We're going to take on the neuroscience. We're going to take on medications. And then we're going to get to the most important part of this episode at the very end, which is the drug free options and care approaches that you may not yet know about that are out there working for literally hundreds of thousands, honestly, millions of people who I guess you'd have to say were formerly struggling with ADHD and now instead are thriving with ADHD. If you've clicked onto this podcast, you're listening to this podcast, you can't wait to get the drug-free solutions from this podcast. You've already probably been on the hunt. You already probably have realized, man, the last thing I want to do is put my kids on medication. Hopefully we found you right before that choice. I want to kick this off with a really cool story um, from a phone consultation that I had with an amazing mom a couple of years ago. It was a real pivot, massive pivot point in my career. So for 15, 16 years now, I've been sharing exactly what I'm sharing here on this podcast, that these struggles our kids are going through, these neurological challenges from sensory issues to ADHD to autism to anxiety, that we do know the root cause. It's not just genetics, and it's a sequence of things, which I'm going to get into here in a second with ADHD, 
that causes the nervous system to get out of balance, to get overstressed, to get stuck in sympathetic overdrive, mess with the brain, mess with the whole body, and get it to kind of spill over the line or that cliff we talked about in the introduction, if you will. And now something that could be a superpower becomes a struggle, becomes a day-to-day hindrance into the quality of life. So clinically, because a lot of kiddos with autism, with ADHD, and really honestly, just kiddos, period, definitely don't like to sit in the same room with their parents and a doctor or a teacher or whoever else, maybe another professional. Kids don't like to sit in the room and have somebody else talk about all the things that are not going well with them. In fact, right here through the story, I can also poke the bear of something that really ticks me off. The fact that most pediatricians, most psychologists, psychiatrists, everybody in this kind of world, even teachers freaking do this. They will, within earshot of kids, talk about, hey, you've got ADHD. This is a problem. You don't sit still. You don't pay attention. You can't stop moving. That's bad. You're bad. And kids are obviously very impressionable emotionally. And the thing that breaks my heart inside and out is not just that a kiddo would think that ADHD, um, you know, not know that their ADHD can actually be harnessed into a superpower, which is really the golden thread of this episode. But what breaks my heart is when adults and professionals, especially who should know better, literally in front of the child talk about all that's supposedly wrong with them, all that's broken, and give them this identity of ADHD. I've met so many teenagers, and honestly, even grade schoolers and elementary kids in my clinic, who when I meet them on this first couple of visits, I can tell that they've bought into this. They've bought into the identity that they're broken, that something's wrong with them, and that forever they need medication to kind of, sort of, hopefully be okay. I don't know too much, too many other things things that are more heartbreaking than that. And in the early stages of my career, I talked about this on the second episode. It's a really great episode where we go into what we call the drugs first to drugs last shift that is happening right now, right now today with our generation of parents. You rock star moms and dads are making that shift happen. And this story with this phone chat consultation with the mom, and we do it on the phone because, again, I, one, like to get into the struggle and make sure I know what this family's up against. And two, we like to really take our time and listen to parents and and, and have their concerns. We're not the pediatrician or the neurologist who's in and out of the room four minutes later and never paid attention even during the four minutes they were there. We really sit down deep and we dive into these consultations and we listen to your concerns and we listen to the root cause. We go through the perfect storm. We answer questions And then we make explanations like we're going to do throughout this podcast. So that's why it works so much better on the phone. So we can have the time. The child doesn't need to be there. And we can really help that parent make sense of what's going on and get a good drug-free action plan going forward. And I think because I had been doing these phone consultations for so many years, talk about a a case of neuroplasticity, hard wiring, right? We're going to talk about ADHD's wiring here in a second. I just naturally, I don't always, by any means, I I despise the word scripts. We, We don't cookie cutter our care. We don't cookie cutter our communication. But I think there's just these phrases, a la perfect storm, gas versus brake pedal. You know, you're hearing about them already over and over again on the podcast that I probably say a lot with my patients to help them make sense. One of them is this, because the mom was telling me we've been struggling. Kiddo was in sixth grade and the struggles really started to rear their head, the ADHD related struggles for this little dude around third grade. Now that's a common transition season where a kiddo who was maybe, you know, highly wound, lots of energy, but doing okay in school, they often will hit the skids. The ADHD brain and wiring, if you will, will really hit its struggle point around second to third grade transition. Because if you know the school education system, that's when it starts to get a lot more real and school starts to get a lot more serious and more difficult from that brain-based, we'll call it, way. So it was making sense to me that this kiddo struggles, which were always there. Now, this kiddo had been a perfect storm, colicky baby, had some sensory issues, had had some gross motor delays, had some sleep challenges and constipation, things that we'll talk about are absolutely within the box of neurophysiological mechanisms that eventually mess with the brain and cause ADHD in the first place. So this mom didn't know it at the time, but doing her research, which is obviously how she found drug-free pediatric chiropractic care, and was having this chat with me, she knew that her kiddo's issues really hit a kind of big spike in third to sixth grade, but she now knew already, especially finding some of our content about the perfect storm that they had been brewing for a long time. So my phrase to her was, well, I am so glad you found us. I know for many families, we end up being a last resort. And I often joke with our team that we should answer the phone. Hey, welcome to the last resort. 
Now, when I said that, that mom who was a raging bull, ADHD, so we'll talk about the genetic components here right next. That mom knew ADHD really, really well for her kiddo because she had struggled with it and then turned it. She had turned her struggles with ADHD. She had been medicated as a child as well, and it didn't go well. She had a real big challenge with the medications, both while on them and then especially with what we call the rebound effect of getting off of them when she was a young adult. And it's something that very much meant the world to her to help her child's ADHD go from struggles to thriving and do it without medications. So when I said, welcome to the last resort, she stopped me dead in my tracks and she said, oh no, Dr. Tony, you are definitely not the last resort. Chiropractic is definitely not the last resort. We have already tried ADHD coaching. The teachers have been wonderful and given all these different kind of breaks and longer times to take tests and, and allowed us to have a little wobble seat for our kiddo to sit on. And we've done all sorts of diet and nutrition and supplementations. So we've done many things before trying chiropractic, but I promise you this, she said to me, you are the second to last resort. I already know that the moment I call my pediatrician, they're going to either give me the medication and stimulant medications right there, eight minutes or less in the office, or they'll just kick me down the road to a neurologist who won't take any time to get to know my kid, won't listen to any of my actual concerns, won't do any real test or examination for ADHD. Why would they not do that? Because it doesn't exist. And then they'll put my child on medications. And to me, that is the last resort. I'll never forget that conversation. And I wanted to take a few minutes to to replay it here for you on the podcast because excitedly, awesomely, that is where we are as a generation of parents. The gig is up on the fact that medications, heck yes, millions of times per day are life saving. These included sometimes kids neurological issues get so out of hand. The brain gets so out of balance and sometimes parents, they just need a. They need a life preserver for a few months to get the kiddo to just kind of hit pause on the storm. So then the things we're going to talk about on this podcast, where we actually get to the root cause, we actually repair, restore, rebuild, regenerate, and reorganize the brain and nervous system to go from struggling with ADHD and neurological challenges to thriving with them instead Sometimes medications save lives, but to the tune that 3.3 million U.S. kids right now today are already on ADHD stimulant class two medications. Something's not right with that. The fact that 10%, one out of 10 kids are diagnosed with ADHD. And by the way, the stats I could prepare for this podcast episode today, you can go to our website, pxdocs.com, pxdocs.com, and you can read all the articles, all the scientific research-based articles I've written about ADHD, autism, and so forth. You read the articles, you're going to get a ton of information. All the citations, all the stats, all the research I will reference on all these podcast episodes is on our website. Go there, check it out. If you love that stuff, they're there for you. But these stats are actually outdated. These stats are before COVID. Now, what COVID did to already stressed out kids and people is doubled it, tripled it, and worsened it. What COVID did, especially to kiddos struggling in the classroom, is it doubled, tripled, or 10x their struggles. So these numbers of 10% of kids diagnosed with ADHD and even more diagnosed with learning disorders and millions of kids being put on ADHD medications, sadly, unfortunately, I believe as I record this today here in 2024, those numbers are actually worse and more. So what is going on? Is ADHD really a disorder? Is ADHD purely genetic? Is it just that our kids were this ADHD kid, your ADHD brain, perhaps if you have it, because millions of adults struggle with this and they can turn this into a superpower as well. I am living, breathing, talking to you through this podcast proof of that. Is it purely genetic? Are we just designed poorly? Is that brain just broken? Is that chemical imbalance of dopamine and serotonin supposedly? Is there just nothing you can do about it? You're like a, you know, poorly designed Ikea coffee. Actually, maybe Ikea didn't design. I always use this reference. You know, you go to college and you start your life, your first house, college house, college apartments. Ikea is wonderful. I'm in Chicago. It's right down the road. And I'm really good at rebuilding brains and nervous systems. Like I understand neurology. Like, like my ADHD in that direction has led me to be one of the world's foremost experts in 
functional neurology and getting kids better through neurological conditions without drugs. I know stuff that far less than 1% of the world's population, even neuroscience researchers, know about the brain and the nervous system. And yet I can't hang a picture frame on the wall without it being crooked and falling off the day after. So anytime I use these uh, metaphors or analogies, I just always share this with parents. Your child's brain or your brain, it's not poorly designed. That's not how God made us. God made us different. There's definitely kiddos who skew towards, there's definitely family trees and genetic histories and predisposition that are going to skew us towards ADHD wiring, but it's not programmed to be a deficit. It's not programmed to be a disorder. You see, to take something like this and one, put a diagnosis, put a label on it so they can then two, prescribe a medication and make money from it. It needs to be told, you need, the world needs to be told and has been told that ADHD kids are broken. Something's wrong. They're bad. They're not good. And the only chance for them to get to good and overcome this supposed genetic, uh, and again, I can only say the word predisposition because I actually know the science. I was a genetics major in undergrad. I am fully ADHD, love science, and harnessed it. I got started getting adjusted in college. So my grades went from struggling because I couldn't sleep, couldn't pay attention because that is exactly what ADHD will do. It'll get in the way of sleep. It'll get in the way of focus. And as a sophomore turning into a junior in college, my classes got harder. So my ADHD brain, which never really needed to pay attention because I could just get assignments done in 13 minutes or less, three minutes or less, and I could take a test and smoke it without even paying attention really much at all. That ceased to be a utility of my ADHD brain in my junior year of college and shifted into a struggle when life got harder. And unfortunately, I was also on the college Jimmy John's Bush Light Never Exercise Lifestyle Program, which is, you know, I'm having fun with that. It's not good for the brain. So it made my ADHD brain less functional and turned it into dysfunction. We also went through a huge emotional disruption, a big loss in my family's life at that time. And my brain shifted from a superpower into struggle. It was actually the first time in my life where my ADHD stopped being a good thing and turned into a tough thing. And so sitting in class, struggling with this sleep, it was so happened to be, this is just God's path for me. That was why while I was studying genetics and molecular biology. So the class, the science that I loved, specifically what I love is neurology. Even at that time in my life, I knew I didn't really love biology. I loved neurology and I was shifting into these classes with kinesiology and physiology and neurology and learning how the brain and the nervous system works, learning about the vagus nerve. This is all the way back when I'm 20, 21 years old. I was falling in love with this stuff. I couldn't wait to learn more about it, yet I couldn't get there because I hadn't got chiropractic yet. I hadn't got drug-free care for my brain and nervous system yet. And God put me on this incredible path where all of a sudden I learned about chiropractic, decided to become a chiropractor, not for my ADHD, actually, for all the typical reasons. I was also a baseball player with a bad shoulder. I was in chronic pain all the time. And I had tried everything else and chiropractic fixed my shoulder fixed my back, fixed my middle back, and then fixed my brain as well. All of a sudden I went from being a kiddo who could never sleep to one who could finally sleep. When I could sleep, I could get up on time for class. I could concentrate in class and my grades went from low B's and C's to straight A's and never went away. That is my story at that time and I share it so you can hear another story that whether your kiddo is 3 or 13 or 19 and 20 like me or whether you're 39, 42, you can make that shift as well. If right now you're ADHD, you've been told it's genetic, you've been told it's a chemical imbalance and you've been told you need medication to fix it. I am living, breathing proof along with millions of other people. I never took a single ADHD medication and now I'm thriving. I thrived in school. I thrive as a dad. I thrive as an entrepreneur. I thrive as a pediatric chiropractor. I thrive as a podcast host. How do you think I get all these things done at the same time without running off the road? I need my ADHD to do the job that God called me to do. And the first thing I will tell you I needed to know is that ADHD is not genetic. So thankfully, I had spent my whole college career studying genetics. So the moment I opened the hood and I started to apply the genetic theory to ADHD and look for the answers that medical doctors and pharmaceutical companies tell people are going to be found in the genetic hunt, they were not. There is no 
actual concrete proof at all that genetic is what's called hard, that ADHD is what's called hardline genetic. When people say that ADHD is genetic, what they're talking about is yes, if two parents with ADHD have a kiddo, they are more likely to have a child who has ADHD. Now, why? Is it just simple? This is passed on. There's nothing you can do about it. No. How do two ADHD parents live? Full speed, raging bull, going a million miles an hour, and maybe they're ADHD. Maybe they haven't heard this podcast episode and the science and the perspective shared here, and they have bought hook, line, and sinker that their ADHD is a struggle, that they are broken, that they need medication. So what do you think they're going to tell their kiddo? You're broken too. Here's your medications. There is definitely signs of this awesome ADHD wiring in a couple of the four evil kiddos, and I couldn't be happier about it because I know exactly how to harness it and send them in the direction that their mother and I have gone because we are both highly wound, full speed, get things done that God called us to at a faster rate than your average bear people, and we so pray and so hope and so plan for our kiddos to use this genetic wiring they have for good and not buy into any of it being bad. ADHD correlates strongly with distinctive personality types. ADHD walks a fine line between struggles and superpowers. And that's the line. That's the conversation we're going to take all the way through this. Finally here today, just like I talked about on the autism deep dive episode. Now today you get on these typical websites, WebMD, Healthline and so forth. First and foremost, they're still going to try and sing the song that have been sung, that they've been singing for decades, which is ADHD is genetic. They want people to not scroll to the rest of the article where finally, because research is very very clear and has been for the last 20 years that it's not solely genetic, that there's genetic predisposition and slight wiring in that direction. But they will then begin to discuss, ah, there's environmental influences. And just like with autism, that's all they say. Now, they finally admit the truth. Oh, there's environmental influences, but they never unpack that. They never actually, I, I actually, again, once, even though I knew I was going to find, or probably better said, I knew what I wasn't going to find on all these traditional medical websites. I did my research getting ready for this podcast episode again. I was hoping one of them, come on, Cleveland, come on, Healthline, come on, Mayo, somebody take that reality, environmental influences, and just try, just throw us a little bit of a bone. Why don't you just, yeah, me? Maybe admit there's something out there, right? With toxins and stress. And now about the only environmental influence that the CDC, the FDA, and, and these websites will talk about is socioeconomic. They definitely know that families who have more emotional socioeconomic strife have a higher propensity for ADHD. Of course they do. What shows up there is more stress. But stress is not relegated to certain communities, to certain cities, to certain states, to certain countries, to certain genetics, stress is everywhere. The conversation we're going to have again today with this ADHD deep dive episode is that this is the truest statement I can share. All of our kids, the vast majority of kiddos, are exposed to more stress quantity-wise, more stress earlier than ever before. Our journeys to get pregnant, fertility and preconception, more stress, more medical intervention, more toxicity than any generation ever before. Maternal, prenatal distress, it's called. So a high stress, high anxiety, high risk, high blood pressure, high cortisol, high inflammation pregnancy, more common by a large margin than ever before. And a high stress birth, labor and delivery, use of birth interventions like C-section, forceps, vacuum, induction, and epidural. The rates of birth stress have skyrocketed in the last generation or two and then show up toxins. So what we're talking about here is we're now into the second section of the meat of the conversation with this podcast episode about ADHD. We will talk about this concept every single episode the perfect storm. And the perfect storm begins with those three factors. Stress is the word of the day with the perfect storm. And it shows up first in the pregnancy and the fertility journey. And we know there's research. Again, you can go to pxdocs.com and you can find all these research citations and articles about this in the individual bullet points. I'm going to talk about on these podcasts, along with the whole thread, you can always find that information on our website. But the truth is we now know there is statistical meta-analysis research 
research uh, all over, tons of it, that shows high stress pregnancies and birth and labor interventions are strongly correlated with ADHD, autism, anxiety, obesity, asthma, autoimmune, allergies, you name it, four kids later in life. So this stress gets into their nervous system, gets into their brain, gets into their body early when it's first developing and first forming. So it's not just that that one part of the equation is not good, the stress and the toxicity. The real not good part of this is how early our kids are exposed to it. We all know that stress is a part of our life. When we get a little bit more into school and it gets a little more difficult, we know that stress is part of our life when we become a teenager and a high schooler and a college student. And we definitely know that being all grown up has stress. Stress, by the way, isn't all bad. There's a leading researcher many years ago, decades ago, Hans Selye, talked about the two different types of stress, the two different types of stress, excuse me. There is you stress, which is useful. Stress builds resiliency. Stress builds adaptability. We're going to talk about this. We're going to harness the highly charged brain to build it. The ADHD brain is actually more resilient. The ADHD brain can often be more capable of doing big, complicated things that the non-ADHD brain may not do as well. That's the conversation people need to have. And it starts with understanding stress. And the other kind of stress is distress. So when pregnancy is full of distress, when labor and delivery is full of distress, when your baby is colicky, fussy, can't latch, can't nurse, can't digest, can't eat, and they're colic and they're constipated and they're eczema and they're chronic ear infections, and then they get antibiotics and then they get inhaler and steroid medications and then they get nebulizers and the steroids destroy their immune system and lead them further into sympathetic dominance, which the number one side effect of steroid-based medications for asthma, allergies, and illness is, oh, by the way, hyperactivity, irritability, and ADHD-like challenges. Oh, by the way, overuse of antibiotics and exposure to toxins early in life has been known to get into the gut, wreak havoc, create what's called leaky gut and gut-brain inflammation, and now the gut cannot create, assimilate, and absorb serotonin and dopamine. So we're going to get into the chemical imbalance theory, which is wildly outdated, and it is accurate but incomplete. Let me say that one more time. The perfect storm theory, sorry, <laughs> the genetic theory and the chemical imbalance theory of ADHD and other disorders as well, the statement would ring true for depression, anxiety, and everything else, is accurate. There is a chemical imbalance, but it is incomplete. It does not even come close to telling you the entire neuroscience behind what's really causing this ADHD wiring imbalance, which has a component of chemical imbalance. But those chemicals are called literally by name neurotransmitters. So here's the most important part of the science I can teach you. When a child goes through these three and then the fourth component of the perfect storm for an ADHD brain is missed motor milestones, oftentimes the raging bull, hyperactive, impulsive kid will actually sometimes go through motor milestones too fast. They will be too full of tension. They're the kiddo who's walking already at eight to 10 months. They're the kiddo who loves sports, loves being active, loves going to the play area and literally climbing everything and being high risk and being all over the place. They need that excessive movement stimulation to try and calm their brain because it's full of this, what we'll talk about in a second here, sympathetic subluxation fight or flight tension and that we're going to address drug-free with neurologically focused chiropractic. So oftentimes the fourth component component of the perfect storm, altered milestones aren't always delayed milestones. Traditionally, a child who misses motor milestones, they're slower through them or they miss them altogether. The CDC literally took crawling out of their milestones chart because so many kids are now skipping crawling and not because they're not supposed to go. Crawling is essential to organize, calm, and get the brain to its best place for focus, concentration, social, emotional regulation and communication later on. So skipping, crawling, CDC, you miss this one, like you miss a lot of things, is really freaking essential to not struggle with these brain-based things later on. So instead of actually ever addressing the root cause and admitting what's really going on in our world, the CDC is just like, ah, we'll just wipe that one out. 
So that fourth component, missed milestones, delayed milestones as it relates to ADHD often leads to the inattentive, struggling to focus, struggling to socially, emotionally regulate the kind of old school ADD, if you will. I'm actually not even going to get into the, some people like to talk about ADHD in three types. Some people like to talk about the six DSM diagnosis. They now have six different types of ADHD and the more types they can have, the more diagnosis they can give, the more medications they can give. That's why the those are there. It doesn't make it any more clear understood what's actually causing ADHD for the parent or for the patient. And it definitely doesn't help them understand how to use drug free solutions to get the child from struggling to thriving. But it definitely helps diagnose more kids with it and send them down that road that we know that system loves people to go down, stay down and be there forever. So here's how we like to look at ADHD. There's really just two simple types. There's the raging bull fight or flight stuck on impulsive, hyperactive, wound up kiddo and then there's the drunken bull slowed down too much Pro, that cognitive emotional processing just goes a little slower it has more interference it grinds its gears their posture is a little slower their motor coordination is a little more discombobulated they do not love sports they do not do well with hand-eye coordination and therefore they do not do well with reading and learning comprehension and focus and concentration so there's really just two different neurological pathways medically both of those kids are going to be diagnosed with ADHD even though the former the, the second group there the drunken bull inattentive type they definitely don't have the H they have the inattentiveness and attention challenges okay so when we look at these three or four perfect storm factors that get them there what it leads to is it leads to a nervous system a central and autonomic nervous system that is first, foremost, foundationally out of balance. ADHD, when struggling, is absolutely an imbalance. And if that imbalance becomes too much, if the gap between what's called the gas pedal, the sympathetic fight or flight system, and the brake pedal, the vagus nerve, parasympathetic, rest, regulate, digest, and concentrate side of the nervous system is suppressed too much. So this neurological imbalance is at play for kids struggling with ADHD. The bigger that gap gets, the bigger their struggle gets which right away, I'm still in the thick of talking about the challenges and the problem and the science, but I want to sneak ahead to the, to, to the good. I want to get you to, I'm going to go car before the horse intentionally with this episode. So let me walk through that one more time because I think it's just right in there with the most important part of the actual neuroscience behind ADHD and neurological disorders. It's a central autonomic nervous system imbalance, a brain and nervous system imbalance where you have too much of the sympathetic fight or flight gas pedal and you have too little of the parasympathetic vagus nerve of rest, relaxation, regulation, focus, concentration side of the nervous system. The bigger that gap gets, the bigger the struggle gets. Now, that gap from the nervous system, that gap from the central and autonomic nervous system is essential to finally make sense of why the chemical imbalance theory and reality physiologically is there. The chemicals that they talk about with ADHD, dopamine, serotonin, and so forth, are chemicals that are neurotransmitters designed to, and this is literally their one and only job, to transmit messages and control communication for the brain and nervous system. Have you ever heard the phrase, don't kill the messenger? Medications kill the messenger, not the cause of the imbalance. The chemicals are following what the nervous system tells them to do. The nervous system is the boss. And if there's an imbalance, what's called dysautonomia, sympathetic dominance, and vagus nerve dysfunction, terms that we're going to keep going here and break down individually, because when you learn about these, and you learn that when they are there in a not good way, you better believe, yes, they cause these chemicals dopamine, serotonin, and so forth to get in balance. You better believe the endocrine system and the neurotransmitter system becomes a mess. You better believe the adrenals and the HPA access and the amygdala and the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex and all of these things get involved. But all of those things are downstream from the actual root cause neurological imbalance. And what I need you to know, moms and dads and patients out there, 
is that the way to get rid of the struggles of ADHD and turn them into a superpower is you have to keep digging all the way down to the foundational real root cause. And the foundational real root cause is not chemical imbalance. So I'm going to tell you another story to, to really bring this one true, and then we'll get even further into the science and the drug-free solutions. Many years ago, so I, I've been practicing in this incredible community. Uh, Crystal Lake is the name of our town where PwC Chiropractic, our practice is. McHenry County, it's a Chicago suburb, like big cities, you know, kind of things get split into counties and school districts. And so we have for 16 years been helping kids who are struggling with these things, been helping families who are not, who are having their hope shut down by the medical system, who are having no answers provided by the medical system, they have been our fiercest advocates for many years. And they have gotten us into places like this thing called Parent University. The five big high schools around here for many years, they put together this um, Saturday thing where there was tons of different professionals in health, mental health, behavioral health, academic health, you know, all sorts of different health professionals would come and do this full day seminar, if you you will for parents. And one of the amazing partners I've had in this community for a long period of time, in fact, I'm absolutely going to get him on this podcast and have this same conversation, but you're going to hear it through his lens. Dr. Doug Neal is an incredible psychologist, meaning he's not a psychiatrist, so he does not prescribe medications. He has been focused and specialized, and he is an absolute expert in drug-free natural solutions for ADHD, and he's an absolute pioneer in this world. And and he, we're so blessed to have him. He's just an incredible human. We're so blessed to have him in this community. And so I had partnered up with Dr. Neil, have, many, many years ago. We would actually teach the Perfect Storm workshop and lecture together. And when parents would say, hey, I not only need to get my kiddos adjusted to get to the root cause, because what adjustments do, just to skip, don't skip to the end. Listen to the whole podcast, please. You're going to love everything. But what we do with our adjustments is we get right to that root cause neurological imbalance and we restore balance to the central autonomic nervous system. We shut down and release tension from the sympathetic fight or flight system. We activate and stimulate the vagus nerve, the parasympathetic, the regulation, the concentration side of the brain, which allows the cerebellum, the amygdala, the hippocampus, and the prefrontal cortex to all work better the way they're supposed to. And ADHD goes from a struggle to a superpower. There, there's the science real quick, real fast. I taught that to Dr. Neil many, many years ago because his goal, his dream, and the focus of his practice was always to help kids without drugs. And he had done a wonderful job with it, but it's hard to improve the diet and the lifestyle of a child who's already stuck in the storm. A child who is sympathetic fight or flight dominant doesn't like eating healthy. They like Kraft mac and cheese, Rockstar energy drinks, and Starbucks frappuccinos. A child who is stuck on fight or flight wound up all the time. When you teach them breathing exercises, almost basically can't do them because their nervous system is trapped in sympathetic dominance, so it sucks at breathing. When you give them strategies, hey, when you threaten them with discipline, which is where most parents often will go, man, if you don't sit down, you don't be quiet, you're going to get in trouble. That just stresses their brain out more and the struggles become more. When you try rewards, hey, if you do a good job, if you get all your stickers today, we're going to McDonald's to get some chemicals which are going to mess with your brain and they can't get it. They don't get the reward because it's not them trying to misbehave. It's their brain being out of balance, which then gets their neurotransmitters out of balance and then gets them in trouble. They can't help themselves. ADHD is real and it's a real struggle and it can really get better. And yes, diet changes help. And yes, supplements help. And yes, talk therapy helps. And yes, behavioral modifications help. But they don't help much at all if a child is subluxated, sympathetic, dominant, and stuck in the storm in the first place. So there's a sequence to getting kids better. And you're learning it for the first time, probably for millions of you here on this podcast today. You've tried the diet changes. You've tried the Dr. Neils. You've tried the talk therapy. You've tried the discipline. You've tried the rewards. You've tried it all. And Dr. Neal had been doing this with his patients for a long period of time. And when he learned about the perfect storm, when he learned about neurologically focused chiropractic, subluxation, vagus nerve, birth trauma, sympathetic dominance, the way I was able to teach him in my first year of practice, we partnered up to help kids and families in this community. And Dr. Neal got me in to this parent university. Obviously, when the invites go out, it's the school. So who has, what has the medical system done wonderfully? Bought pretty much 
everybody, right? You go to a school, health fair, there's no health there. There's the dentist. I'm sorry, I shouldn't throw dentists under this bus too. Clean teeth are wonderful. Let's go. I should go more often. Okay, so you go there and it's health fair. Eh, is it? No, it's sickness and disease experts talking to parents about how to get their kids healthy. What do you think a sickness and disease expert knows? More of that. And so we're stuck in this system. Different episode for a different day. But I get in on this roster for Parent University. You know, this has kind of been the story of my life. All of a sudden, just talk about benefit of being an ADHD raging bull um, kid Cairo. All of a sudden, I show up at parties that people didn't even know they invited me to because I just find my way there so I can serve families and do good in this world. So there I am. I show up at Parent University one year and I'm on the, uh, what do you want to call it? The sidetrack. I got like a 20 minute talk down at the end of the hallway in a classroom that doesn't have air conditioning. They're like, put the chiropractor down there. Let's just, nobody's going to like it. Nobody's going to go there. Nobody's going to like it. Well, guess what parents don't like most? Drugs, medications, and seeing their kids struggle, not only with ADHD and anxiety, but then take medications and deal with all the freaking side effects of them. So guess what parents already, when this story was happening 10 years ago, 10 plus years ago, guess what parents were looking for? Me. Guess what you're looking for? Us. Drug-free care to not only help your child not struggle, but to do it without drugs and all the nasty, unwanted, short and long-term side effects that come with them. So year one, I rock that talk. I do the perfect storm talk, basically TED Talk style. I had 20 minutes and parents were blown away and word got out. They do feedback forms and mine, ours were good. Next year, I get an hour. I'm still on the sidetrack, but I get an hour and the feedback forms through the roof. More Tony, more cowbell. Let's go. More drug-free solutions. I don't know what the school meetings were thinking about when they were building this, but somebody, Dr. Neal and another person were very influential in that world and they get me the third year of parent university here with the local high school. I'm the keynote. I kick the day off. Everybody is in the auditorium, including all the other presenters. There's only one person talking at the first hour of the day. It is the lead presenter, keynote talker guy, and it's me. And you're thinking, well, they gave you a keynote and that's how you talk. You said talker guy. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. It's entertaining and life changing at the same time. Okay. And I hope this podcast is, by the way, please share and review. Okay. So I rock the perfect storm talk exactly how God designed me to do. And I've been doing this work now for a couple of years and seeing absolutely Absolutely transformational, miraculous results in getting kids off. When I say I, these kids heal on their own. We are just a vehicle and a facilitator for that. It's the parents who are the hero. It's the kiddos who are the hero. We empower them. We adjust them. They thrive. They kick butt. They get off drugs and they go do life the way God intended it for them, using their ADHD to do things that the world needs massively. These are the future engineers. These are the future innovators. These are the future pediatric chiropractors who can do three things at once and do it well. These are the people we need to change the world. ADHD will be harmed into the superpower. Your kiddo will do amazing things in life when you take the path this podcast is taking you down. And so I rock that talk. And as soon as I'm done, I then also had a breakout session. So I was also co-teaching with Dr. Neil. Um, drug, and it literally, by this point, they were ready to just go for it. It said drug-free solutions, drug-free options for ADHD. Our room was packed. They had a standing room only and bring chairs in after that. But on the way to that room, I knew that I had five minutes to finish my keynote, go from the auditorium and go to the classroom. I was going to do these breakouts for the rest of the day with Dr. Neil on. And I walk out of the main auditorium doors and there is a, what would Jackie, our office manager, she has these wonderful words. I believe she would call this a gaggle. Okay. A gaggle of other professionals. You know, imagine, man, have you ever watched Simpsons? There's this really fun, funny Simpsons episode where uh, Homer like falls on his garbage can and the way it bends and breaks, it cracks his back and his back pain goes away. And this is not, I shouldn't tell this because this is not actually what chiropractic does at all. It's way beyond back pain, but it's a hilarious Simpsons episode about chiropractic. So then what Homer does is he starts a non-sanctioned, non-licensed, basically chiropractic joint out of his garage and he takes all of his buddies over and he just shoves them backwards over the garbage can and it cracks their back and they get all, you know, miraculously healed. So uh, at the end of the episode, the local chiropractors gang up, a gaggle of angry chiropractors come and storm his garage and they destroy his garbage can because they were destroying his their business. So that's funny. Uh, I don't know if you should tell TV show stories on a podcast. I'm still getting my bearings here with this podcast job I got. And so, but I definitely know, given my ADHD brain, I, I tell long stories. This is from my mother. I said it on the first episode. If you hear me say a little story to kick this section off, and if I say short story, I mean long story. But hopefully they're useful, relative, and entertaining at the same time. 
And if you're walking on the treadmill or hanging out in the gym right now, l- working out and you're laughing and smiling and people are looking at you awkwardly as you listen to this podcast, I have done my job because we're having a real serious conversation on every episode. So sometimes it's just fun to have fun. So what happens with this gaggle of medical doctors, this gang in the hallway? It's like, I never did get picked on. I was, you know, I'm an outgoing guy. I, I never got, you know, jammed up in high school. This is like my first experience with like, are they going to shove me in a locker? And then I was like, well, I'm a cop. Chiropractor, CrossFitter. I'm in pretty good shape. I don't think these white coats can can take me and get me in the locker. So I digress a lot. So here's what they asked me. All right, all right. So I thought they were going to jump me. I thought they were going to be angry. And I think a few of them might have been a little perturbed. But there was a leader of this gang, and she is wonderful. She is actually a wonderful friend here today. She unfortunately moved to Florida and retired and doesn't practice anymore. But she was a psychiatrist who asked me this question. She said, here's what she said to me in person. She said, Dr. Ebel, and I knew it was serious when she used my last name. Dr. Ebel, that was incredible. And it's finally starting to make sense for me why over these last couple of years, any time a family would come in to me and say, hey, we started to go see this Dr. Tony guy and get neurologically focused pediatric chiropractic. My kiddo is better. Can we get them off of these medications? And she said, I am so excited Every single time a family tells me their child is doing better and you better believe because I'm sure you don't. But what I want to do for every one of my patients is not have them be reliant on medications during this crucial time of life called being a teenager and a high schooler where the brain and the hormones are already so sensitive and so out of whack and changing so fast. Medications can be useful, but they also can be dangerous. Hearing her say this, it was like the angels, you know, the clouds had parted and the angels were singing. And she said, but I still have one. One question that I think you kind of addressed in your talk there, but you didn't really address. How are you helping when it's a chemical imbalance and you're not changing chemistry? You're not doing diet changes. You're not doing supplements. And you're certainly obviously not doing medications. We know, this is what she said to me, we know that ADHD is a chemical imbalance. So how the heck are you helping? And I said, and for the first time in my life, because I'm usually not very Socratic, meaning like asking questions of others. Usually I'm like, oh, I got the answers I know you're looking for. Let me just, let me just have, let me give them to you. And so I said, let me ask you this, what chemicals are imbalanced and involved with ADHD? And she said, well, obviously dopamine and serotonin. And I said, what are those chemicals categorized as? Like if we go back to school, we look in our anatomy and physiology textbook, what are those chemicals? And she said, they're neurotransmitters. I said, I fixed the first five letters. We work on the N-E-U-R-O component of that imbalance. When you get the neuro system back in balance, guess what follows suit? The neurotransmitters and the chemistry. That was all she needed to understand the real neuroscience, not just behind ADHD, but behind neurologically focused chiropractic and how it can help kids without drugs. And from that day forward, she was the only one out of that gang. I never really met the rest of them. They never sought us out. It breaks my heart that that other providers, medical providers can learn this. I don't know if they know this. I think a lot of them do and still don't change because they want to, but they're in a system that doesn't allow them to. Well, thankfully, this amazing doc... She was in private practice, and from that day forward, she would refer to us multiple kids per month, and often we would get them early during the what we would call care plan, and she would send them to us before even putting on medications, but often she would have kids who are already on medications, and she would send them to us, and we would work together to get them better, to get the nervous system in balance, taken care of first, and then get them off medications, and we did that in collaborative care for years. So that's a cool little story that also gives you another action step, which as we get towards the back end of this podcast, I want to always turn them into not just stories and science, but real life action steps and solutions you can go forward. You need that kind of psychiatrist. You need the psychologist that is Dr. Neil. You need someone who has drug-free strategies and is fully open. If you're taking notes, mom and dad, if you're that kind of note taker with a podcast like this, and maybe you are because this is the condition that is wreaking havoc on your child's life and you know that the best of them actually is ADHD and you can see them thrive if you had the right doctors and the right strategies. So if you're taking notes, here's what you need. You need collaboration from your care team. If you already have a pediatrician, a neurologist, or a clinical psychiatrist who is on your kiddo's team, and they are not 
open to you working on neurologically focused chiropractic and other drug-free options to get your kiddo better. To one, go for the biggest, best goal, which is them thriving so much they don't need medication, or at least, goodness, at least this, be less dependent on it, less side effects, less dosages, then you've got the wrong doctor on your team. Parents, you need to hear me on this part of the podcast. You're in charge. I'm not in charge of my patients. Their parents are. Your psychiatrist, psychologist, pediatrician, and neurologist, they're not in charge. They want to be, most of them. They love to be. They roll into work riding a high white horse. I'm just kidding. They, they drive white Porsches usually. But they literally want to be in charge because they've been trained by the system to do that. I know when I say that, you're like, ah, I told you this was going to be a little controversial. That's actually not controversial. It's just freaking proven. Most doctors don't get to make decisions that they even want to, let alone you, the parent, the advocate, the real boss wants to. So if you listening to this, I hope you're getting a ton out of the science and, and the real neurophysiology behind ADHD, but I hope you hear these action steps as well. If you have a doctor who doesn't roll, I'm going to say it the Tony way. If your doctor doesn't roll the way you want to roll, if they don't listen to your concerns answer your questions, get to the real root cause, and get you drug-free options that you can at least try first before class two stimulant narcotics that are literally regulated by the FDA because that's what they are, coke and cocaine, then you need a new doctor. They're out there. Now, I know that may be disheartening because I said 95%. Well, the 5% exists, and they are there for you, and they are wonderful. And I have made it my mission here locally to find these other professionals that we work with. And here's some other exciting news. You can find them through the PX Docs Network. When you go to our website, you'll find the directory of not only the neurologically focused chiropractor, which you need first and foundationally on your team, because you can, no one else at all, and I know I'm still cart before the horse and I haven't really broken down the science of how it works. That's my last chapter of this podcast. But you need a neurologically focused pediatric chiropractor to change your child's nervous system and the actual brain body function and communication first, because that's what controls the gut. That's what controls the adrenals. That's what controls cortisol. That's what controls dopamine. That's what controls inflammation. The nervous system is the boss. So the boss of your kid's care plan team, I don't actually mean boss, the first person on the team, not the last person, not second to last, like my story before, the first person we should all be calling to turn our kids' ADHD struggles into thriving and superpowers is actually a nervous system focused chiropractor. But you may need additional support. Maybe your kiddo has been struggling for a long time with their emotional status. And so you want a clinical psychologist who can help. Well, putting the two together is one plus one equals 11 instead of one on their own. Maybe you do absolutely want your kiddo to eat better, eat healthier, get less sugar, less inflammation into their system. Well, then you need those professionals as well. So what's awesome about how each of us PX doctors has built our practice is we have actively sought out and find and know the Dr. Neils and these other drug-free natural health experts in our community. What I love about families going into a nervous system focused PX chiropractor is you not only get the hope, the empowerment, the adjustments, and the care that we can provide, you get our network you get our philosophy, you get our perspective, you get our connections. So parents, if you have felt hopeless, I don't have a neurologist like that. I don't have a pediatrician like that. I don't have someone who will listen to me and roll the way I want to roll. Go to the chiropractor first, get started with their care, and then say, hey, I need help here. Who you got? I need help over here. Who you got? We got people. All right. So before we just, let's just, you know, let's just drive the nail into that chemical imbalance, outdated, inaccurate. Actually, the best way to say it, I've always said it this way, in, it, it is accurate. It is incomplete. It doesn't tell the whole story theory. This is literally from Healthline, which is an awesome but very medically derived website. And it says chemical imbalance in the brain. What you should know, evidence suggests an imbalance in brain chemicals does not cause any specific mental health condition. The cause of conditions like depression, anxiety, and ADHD are likely, I love that they're like, they are, much more nuanced. A chemical imbalance in the brain is said to occur when the brain has either excessive or insufficient chemical messengers called neurotransmitters. Now, there should be another sentence. If they really knew what was going on, there would be another sentence right after that that it's not. I just got done reading what they said. Now I'm inserting what I would say and have said on our articles. That is accurate. There is that imbalance of neurotransmitters and that excessive and in excessiveness and insufficiency of them is first caused by excessive sympathetic dominance and suppressive parasympathetic vagus nerve tone. That condition that really actually causes this is called dysautonomia and nervous system dysregulation. 
And that's my last component of this is to really, really teach you how those things are. I had a whole section in my notes here about the side effects of ADHD medications. They're nasty. They're awful. They're short term. Sleep, diet, growth suppression. Um, and oh, these are fun. Ticks, irritability, moodiness, stomach problems, fast heart rate and high blood pressure. Isn't it kind of crazy that an overstimulated brain that then can kick out ADHD is treated medically with stimulants? Yeah, I always have told this, I've said this is kind of like it's reverse physiology. They overstress an already stressed system to such a degree that they basically shut it down. Pretty much every family I talk to, even when the ADHD medications go into their child, and I know I'm on a podcast, so you can't see me unless you're watching the YouTube video, I'm finger quoting when they work, meaning they've suppressed the symptoms. When parents or folks tell me, and I'm not trying to be a jerk with what I'm about to say, it's just a really poignant way of getting people to realize what working really means and doesn't mean. I've met many families over time or any pa even patients over time who say, yeah, I have ADHD, but I have the medications, I take the medications, and they work wonderfully. So my response, again, I guess in this world, I'm more Socratic than usual. My response is always, awesome. Stop taking them for the next 30 days. Do you think they'd still work? And of course they say, no, they actually wear off after about four to six hours, 12 at most, right? So they're not working. They're stuffing, they're suppressing, they're tricking, they're manipulating the brain and the nervous system, which is why there's a massive rebound withdrawal effect when patients get off of them. The side effect of medications for ADHD are real nasty, real tough in the short term, and they're really even worse in the long term because getting off of neuropsychiatric medications has this nasty rebound imbalance the imbalance that was already causing the disorder actually gets worse because the medications come in and manipulate the system to think that there's actually balance there and it makes the problem worse over time which makes it tougher to get better later on now if you're hearing my words right there and you just get disheartened for a second do not worry when a child comes into our clinics and gets nervous system focused chiropractic care and is already medicated we have exact clinical protocols. It's a different plan. It can take a bit longer and it can be a slightly bumpier road to get that kid better than a child who hasn't been medicated yet. I would be remiss and I wouldn't be telling you the truth, which I promise you on this podcast I will always do if I didn't tell you that truth. A child who is already medicated for ADHD, when you go after drug-free care options and approaches for them, it is likely to be a little bit of a longer road with a few more bumps along the way. But we have created clinical protocols and taught it to our nervous system focused chiropractic network of how to get that job done still as quickly and smoothly as possible. We have advanced our clinical protocols and we have a very specific set of them for kids that are medicated. So do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. Just be ready to take it head on with your nervous system focused chiropractor and your care team to go after that. So I can be brief here. You may not believe me as I move into our final session and a section and I say that I'm going to be brief because you've been listening to this podcast for a little bit of time here and but the truth is this we've talked about subluxation and sympathetic dominance already so even though now in my notes this is the section I've introduced them intentionally five to ten times already so here's the actual root cause real root cause of ADHD it is a neurological imbalance that starts with sympathetic dominance when a child goes through the perfect storm a high stress pregnancy physically injurious it birth trauma to the brainstem. The brainstem holds, not only is there tons of stress from that, which is going to stimulate and activate the sympathetic response and nerves that fire together, wire together, especially early on during development, the brain is most plastic and most impressionable. So when a, when there is stress during the prenatal or what's called fetal development period, when there is stress during labor and delivery, and when there is stress in that first three, five, seven years of life, unfortunately, stress is stickier during that time of life. So exposure to stress gets hardwired into the brain and nervous system for these kiddos, and they will get stuck there. When that sympathetic fight or flight system is stuck on, the chiropractic word for that is called subluxation. When you hear us say subluxation, it means stress stuck 
on. There is a physical, neurospinal, biomechanical component, and that is why physical birth trauma from forceps, vacuum, C-section, and induction is such a big deal, because when we physically injure the neck and the brainstem, not only does that trigger a sympathetic response in the body, but it really triggers dysautonomia, because the vagus nerve is a cranial brainstem nerve that exits the brainstem through what's called the jugular foramen, and it goes down through the neck and into the thorax. So the vagus nerve is very sensitive to physical birth stress and injury via things like forceps, vacuum, C-section, and induction. These are the kiddos who show up with difficulty nursing, difficulty latching, difficulty swallowing. These are the kiddos who then have tongue ties, not because the tongue tie is starting the problem, but the tongue tie is a downstream effect of too much sympathetic fight or flight tone and injury to that part of the nervous system. And so the tongue, the, the, the tissues, they become tethered, they become tight because the tongue and those tissues work for the nervous system just like everything else. So it's the neurological signaling and wiring that gets shifted into sympathetic dominance and the other side of the dysautonomia coin is the vagus nerve is located right there and the vagus nerve is sensitive to emotional stress, the vagus nerve is very sensitive to physical injury and subluxation of the upper neck, lower neck, and upper back where it makes its way through and the vagus nerve is also very sensitive to toxicity and inflammation. So the kiddo who doesn't latch well is refluxy, colicky, gets more ear infections, has constipation, gets more medications, gets more mucus, gets sick more often, gets more steroids, gets more Miralax. And so the perfect storm is already brewing full speed by the time most ADHD kiddos are three months, six months, 12 months, 18 months. And the pediatrician says, don't worry, they'll grow out of this colic. They'll grow out of this constipation. They'll grow out of this torticollis. They'll grow out of this plagiocephaly. They'll grow out of these sleep challenges. They'll grow a melting down, crying all the time infant is an ADHD, impulsive, hyperactive, irritable all the time, three-year-old and seven-year-old. They do not grow out of these things. They grow into subluxation, sympathetic dominance, dysautonomia, and what's called nervous system dysregulation. And the final thing on my list here is called vagus nerve dysfunction. Really, all those nerve nerdy, neurological, chiropractic terms mean the same thing. And if you love learning more about this, we're now getting to the very end of this and getting you into action. I strongly encourage and really want you to go to the website, go to pxdocs.com. We will put these article links in the show notes, or you can just go to Google, um, search pxdocs. You can go type in www.pxdocs.com. I'm, I'm pushing this hard because I just know that these articles and this information are on the website. We have put so much into that and it will change your life. You're not only going to get more information. Moms, dads who are looking for drug-free solutions for your kiddo, I know you. You're going to love this hour-long podcast episode, and then you're going to want to do hours more research to help your baby get out of the storm. Go to the website, read those articles, learn about dysautonomia learn about subluxation, learn about vagus nerve dysfunction, learn about birth trauma and the perfect storm. We will link the articles in the show notes. They will change your life when you understand. I, this is a deep dive episode about ADHD and the real root cause and the science and neurology behind it. And it's also kind of an introductory episode. It's also kind of honestly just one-on-one. Once you really unpack all of those terms and know what's going on, then you'll understand this last thing. That's why your ADHD kiddo can't just keep their behavior and their focus and their emotions in check. They also can't sleep. They can't fall asleep, stay asleep. They can't poop. They can't eat. They can't digest. They can't get through a cold. And ADHD kiddos are often sick all the time. There's a high clinical correlation between sleep disorders and ADHD. There's a high clinical correlation between digestive disorders, constipation, eczema, and ADHD. There's a high clinical correlation between neurorespiratory immune challenges, chronic colds, chronic cough, asthma, allergies, and ADHD and the son of a gun when a kiddo is sick all the time they are put on antibiotics and steroid based medications like nebulizers whose side effects all kick out ADHD like behavior and there's a huge clinical correlation between ADHD and gross and fine motor delays and challenges and ADHD and speech issues sensory issues motor tics and often even seizures. Many times this underlying root cause of stress that kicks out the ADHD challenges can continue to kick out worse things downstream if it's not found and taken care of from a foundational root cause level. 
So the final thing to ask here, moms and dads, is how the heck do I find out if this perfect storm, if this subluxation, sympathetic dominance, vagus nerve dysfunction, nervous system dysregulation, and dysautonomia is truly actually causing my kids' challenges? One of the biggest issues parents and patients have faced forever with ADHD is that there isn't a proven test that says, medical test, that says, Here's ADHD. Many have tried, mostly medically, psychiatrists, pediatricians. It's just a survey. Just a questionnaire. Just tracking, tracing symptoms. And then labeling and categorizing someone as ADHD. There's no blood test. There's no brain scan. Some in the more neuropsychiatric advanced world will run PET scans, spec scans, and they'll say, ah, this part of the brain is overactive and this part of the brain is underactive. And they are, like the chemical imbalance theory, accurate, yet incomplete. The brain does what the body tells it to do. The brain is 99.9% .9 a sensory processing satellite and air traffic control system. So what we know about an ADHD brain is that certain parts of the brain are imbalanced. Perhaps there's even right-left brain hemisphere imbalance. I didn't go deep into that at all in this episode because the brain isn't the problem either. The brain is the result of the problem. What we find again and again, and the research is finally stepping up and proving this, is ADHD ends up in the brain, but it doesn't begin in the brain. Just like we talked about with chemical imbalances, ADHD ends up as a dopamine imbalance, but it didn't begin as a dopamine imbalance. The brain, problems with the prefrontal cortex, the hippocampus, the amygdala, those are absolutely components of ADHD that genius people like Dr. Huberman and Dr. Daniel Amen and other people at Harvard and here, there and everywhere will talk about, oh, we found ADHD. You found a component of it. What's causing that part of the brain to be overreactive and that part of the brain to be underreactive and suppressive? Here's where I'm going to get extra personal to close this one down. No one has studied this as much as me. No one has. I always make the joke this way. I study this stuff like the annoying toddler who first learns to gather information by asking an endless array of questions that start with the letter, the word why? Why is the prefrontal cortex out of balance? Why would the amygdala be overreactive and the hippocampus be suppressed? Why would the brain be imbalanced in the first place? What's causing that? You have to keep asking the what's causing that question until you get to the final foundational real root cause. And the real root cause is not from the brain. It ends up in the brain. What we have found again and again is that trauma to the brainstem, the neurospinal system, subluxation, sympathetic dominance, dysautonomia, vagus nerve dysfunction, and nervous system dysregulation combined together. They all basically mean the same thing. But I think each of them is important enough to investigate and research further, moms and dads and providers. If you're listening out here, send us your questions, providers. You go to the website, read those articles, read that research. It's there. The prefrontal cortex, the amygdala, they're doing what the nervous system brains are built bottom up, back forward. That means body, external environment, internal environment, send information through the spinal cord, through the dorsal horn, up through to the brainstem, and then through the cerebellum, and then through the midbrain, and then through the forebrain, and then through to the front of the brain. Middle there, I got that out of order. Forebrain, so brainstem, back, middle, forward. So the brain is doing what stress tells it to do. We have to calm the noise coming from the body. It's called disafferentation, which leads to dysautonomia and kicks out dyspinesis. And you can read all about it on our website. So do we have an ADHD test? Do we have a sensory processing disorder test? Not exactly, but we have a test to tell you and show you and quantify and locate what's actually causing it. We don't treat ADHD. We don't cure ADHD with neurologically focused chiropractic. We don't treat or cure 
anything, any single condition, but we do address the root cause at a deeper, more foundational level, drug-free, natural than any other profession out there. And so what I need you to do as the final action step for this, go to the website, read all the articles, and at the bottom of the articles or on the website all by itself, you'll learn about our clinical approach. You'll see these two tabs on the far left, our care plan and our clinical process, and you'll see a tab that talks about the inside scans. There is now cutting edge incredible. I love it. I wish I could talk another hour about it, but it's technology that prints out reports and scores and colors. So on a podcast, it's hard to talk about the scans. That's why I want you to really go to the website and click on the article that talks about the inside scans because they look inside. That's why they're called the inside scans. They look deeper than any exam out in all of healthcare. And we use thermal EMG and HRV technology to actually measure nervous system dysfunction. We can find it, we can quantify it, and we can do something about it. So I am up on time for this hour. I don't have a clock in my head and probably some change. A deep dive episode into ADHD. Your action steps are if you need to learn more before you get started with drug-free neurologically focused chiropractic care i love you i got you go to the website read the articles read about our care plan and our clinical process read about the insight scans get into the research and learn more about those terms we introduced i know moms and dads whose kids are struggling you are on the hunt and more information is better not less you love these deep dive episodes you love these deep nerdy articles you'll see images there you'll see videos where i can show you the scans, show you the technology and map this out in a visual representation presentation as well. You also find those videos on our YouTube page. You can go to YouTube and search PXDocs, D-O-C-S, and find us there. So my action for you is to go learn more. And then those of you who are ready to get started today, to get your child healing naturally, drug-free, and address the root cause head on today, go to the website, click on the tab that says find a PX doc, and you will find a nervous system focused chiropractor who is trained in this science, trained in these protocols, most most importantly, has this perspective in the connections we talked about before as well. And that is the most impactful, life-changing action step I could tell you about is get started with a nervous system-focused family chiropractor. If you go to our directory and you don't find someone, shoot us a DM. Send us a DM through our Facebook page. You can find me there, Dr. Tony and the PX Docs. It sounds like a bad neurologically-focused chiropractic folk band. Okay? And, or you can go to Instagram, at PX Docs, and you can send us a DM there. You can get in touch with us on the website as well. If you don't see someone local to you, reach out to us. We will go on the hunt for you. We have been training nervous system focused chiropractors through the PX Docs certification programs for the last three years and we're coming up on a thousand but we need thousands. If you have a local chiropractor who even somewhat kind of sort of focuses on pediatrics and nervous system send them this platform send them this podcast and simply ask the question hey I want this kind of care for my kid do you do this? If yes let's roll. If not Will you go get trained by Dr. Tony and the team and then come back and help my kid? That would be a great plan. Parents, you are the advocates. You are in charge. You are the action takers. And I know it's tough. I know exactly what struggling with ADHD is like. For the first 20 years of my life, I did not sleep. I couldn't fall asleep. I couldn't stay asleep. So my raging bull brain could handle things like sports, being a farm. Thank goodness I was a farm kid, right? I was outside active all the time, and I could sit down and take a test. Everything else in between, like turning assignments in and all that sort of stuff, super annoying, didn't really get to it, didn't have time for it. And then I got adjusted. And then I got this lifestyle. And then I got neurologically focused chiropractic. And my life went from a struggle to everything God designed it to be. When people look at me and go, dude, you're crazy. How are you getting so much done yet so happy, so excited, so energized and not burnt out? Because I have, there's the finger quotes again, I know you can't see on the podcast, because I have ADHD. I don't have a deficit. I don't have a disorder. Your kid, your child isn't broken. They don't have a deficit. They don't have a disorder. They have some freaking real unstoppable potential. I know that the world will be changed in the future by change makers, impact makers, and those, as Steve Jobs said, who are crazy enough to think they can and hardwired enough to make it happen. I definitely modified, you know, Mr. Jobs' quote right there for my own personal use. But Raging Bull ADHD rock star kids 
when paired with the handling and the braking capacity that these adjustments, which will release sympathetic dominance and then activate the vagus nerve and stimulate the vagus nerve, that's how our clinical approach works. You'll learn about it on the website. It's the only thing in healthcare that does it like that. It's the most potent, most effective way of changing actual nervous system function and handling the real root cause of ADHD and other changes, or other challenges. That will change your child's brain. That would change your child's life. And all together, it's all of us, this generation of parents, that can change the health of future generations to not be so stressed to not be so out of balance, to not be so toxic, to not be so medication dependent, suppressed, shut down, and completely disconnected from the life that God designed us to live. I don't just believe or think that your kids are meant to thrive. I know that the neuroscience proves it. ADHD 1000% can and will be a superpower for your child. Get to the website. Go read more articles, learn about the technology, learn about our clinical approach, and get connected to a nervous system-focused chiropractor today. And my final request, please help us reach other kids who are in the storm, other families who don't know this truth we just shared on this episode. Will you please subscribe and download not only this podcast, will you please go to Spotify, go to Pod, go to go to Apple, to iTunes, wherever you, wa- you list, watch this, listen to this. Will you please leave a review? I would love, especially with this episode, if you were to say, I listen to the ADHD episode, it changed my life. I can't wait to get started. I have got started. My kid's rocking it. Please keep in touch with us. Leave reviews, go to Instagram, go to Facebook, leave comments, send us DMs, and please share this podcast with other moms. Share it with your providers. Share it with your pediatrician. Share it with your psychologist. Go find the Dr. Neils of the world as well, and you will find the hope, the answers, and the drug-free help that I know you've been searching for, and I hope God led you to this podcast to find. I love this job. We'll never stop doing this job. You'll love this podcast. So will all your other mom and dad homies. Send it out. Share it out. I'll see you on the next one.